Hi guys, I'm Shmi and welcome back to the channel where you join me today in central London where despite my cheeriness, it's actually rather wet, miserable and gloomy today being brightened up by the fact that I've just picked up this car behind me, the new Bentley Bentayga Black Specification. It's a new trim level that at this moment in time has not even yet officially been released. This is one of the first and I'm going to be taking it off on an adventure to help me move house in Germany. I mentioned that was going to be coming soon and I would be using a more appropriate vehicle. I think the Bentayga is probably the most luxurious way to get around Europe, transport a lot of luggage and things with me and then go and purchase some stuff for the new place as well. So this is going to be an adventure. I'll show you around the black spec, tell you the differences, then I'll be starting heading over to Germany and transporting a few random things while I go. So let's get started. I'm not going to let the weather get in the way, but first let's talk about what exactly this new black specification is and why this car is finished in candy red and then why I'm misfortunately wearing a matching jumper which is not intentional at all. Now for me, I've driven the Bentayga a few times before, always in interesting circumstances. I drove it first at the press launch in Palm Springs, California, where we drove in the dunes and then on a racetrack and then I've driven it again since in Scotland on an off-road course. So taking the car to the autobahn and filling it with luggage is the most normal thing I've actually done with a Bentayga, but it's an SUV, that's what it's built for. Now the black specification is the sportier version of the car, but let's take a little look around it and I'll talk about some of the details and features of this specific car. It is one of the first of the black specs. So it's got extra carbon parts, it's finished with all the D-chrome, so no chrome parts around the lights. We'll run over those in more detail, but six litre W12 twin turbocharged, 608 horsepower, 900 newton meters, all wheel drive, eight speed automatic, Top speed is 301 kilometers an hour. Nought to 62 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour is just 4.1 seconds. So it's luxurious, but it's not holding back on power. It is a machine that can get a move on. Now the black spec introduces a very top end trim level to Bentayga. So you have different parts made a little bit more sportily like the mesh grille on the front now finished in black. These parts around the lights are no longer chrome, they're now black as well. It has the carbon fiber parts around the car, so the lower front splitter, the side skirts as well, the directional five spoke wheel choice, those large wheels on the car, 22 inch, and this carbon fiber splitter, you can see running the length, particularly like that Bentley logo you have down there as well. And if we come round towards the back, the carbon bootlid spoiler up at the top, and the carbon fiber diffuser as well, and the W12 with the quad exhaust tips at the back, well, engine up front, of course. Four wheel drive fun, lots of luxuriousness. If we just take a look at the inside keyless system, of course, in here, it's comfortable, it's wonderful. And I've done a full review of the car before, but just take a look at it. And this is finished in such a nice way. And Bentley introduced this as a result of lots of customers wanting to make their cars look this way, you know, not having the chrome surrounds around the windows and along the sides of the doors. So this really, finishes off customer demand and this car as you can see has 98 miles on the clock so it is almost brand new and I'm going to be allowed to take it across the continent so let's get it started up I love that noise it's just a deep growl and rumble if I step out a second come and listen to this are closed but it's not it's not quiet it's quite a sporty and exciting sound so my first port of call today is going to be to take this car over to stick some stuff in the boot and tomorrow is going to be the drive to Frankfurt so let's get started it's actually quite funny starting this video in the center of London because I think this is where many Bentegas will end up finding themselves if they aren't already however like I said, I'm going to be taking it out and in this video I'm going to be driving it over tomorrow to Germany where when I'm over there I'm going to be using it for some interesting stuff, maybe for buying some furniture, maybe for moving a whole lot of things around, you know, we'll see what we can do. But for now, I'm just going to be heading out of here to go pick something up. It's so easy and relaxing driving an SUV in the city. So long as you don't find yourself on really narrow roads where being in a big car like this is stressful, you've got the raised up seating position which gives you great sight lines and visibility and it's just a generally nice place to be and the only noise you've actually really got in here is the noise of the air conditioning. If I just turn this off and make it a bit quieter, 
you get away from most of the hustle and bustle of the city. It's just easy and relaxed and, and a bit calm and then a bit of a noise of a W12 as well which is always a little bonus but the steering's light you just waft along you ride over potholes you can kind of see why this makes some sense step one is very much a baby task for the Bentayga no issue but four tires to go into the boot and an opportunity to see how the practicality of this car works and it's got a couple of quite clever features back here so let's go over to the car open it up keyless of course so when I walk up to it powered tailgate will do its thing and you have to hear the noise this car makes when you start it from cold we won't hear that right now but later on so the first thing i need to do is remove this which obviously is a slightly manual process you have to lift off those two uh, clasps as per any car and then fold that back now ooh, excuse the noise you can lift this out you just lift it up but that's going to take me two hands so i'll have to do that off camera in the back here you've got tracks so you can have numerous different mounting systems installed that makes that side of things very easy and if we come round to the side of the car you can obviously fold the seat forward which you do with a little lever here it comes forwards and then it clicks down so it holds itself down in place with a nice click so I'll go around to the other side and do that as well this is really not a very full test right now of what you can do you've also got levers underneath to pull the back seats forwards and backwards which also have in-car entertainment, by the way. But we've got plenty of space. I need to pop the camera down, lift these up, and then put in the two tires, or the four tires, two sets of tires, tires that I need to take elsewhere for this evening. So, easy way to do this, actually, would be to pop the camera right here. Head round to the back. Hello, through there. Lift this out, which you do like that. Very easy. Pop that down. Uh, the best way to do this, out damaging anything, it's probably right over there at the side. Then, come around here, grab these, and we go. All done, that was nice and easy. And we can fold the boot lid back down, finished. I just need to put away my trolley, and on we go. But you can clearly fit an awful lot of stuff back there. Very, very practical. And by the way, when you're sitting in the back, you have an awful lot of leg room as well. So it's very nice, even with all the materials and things back there. So that's it for now. I'm gonna take those and drop them off and then it'll be loading up the car again with a few things to take to Germany. Guys, I completely missed something. I forgot that you could just walk up to the car and you can wave your leg underneath the boot. So literally like that and it will open itself as if by magic. How easy is that? I mean, we've seen that on other cars, but super cool, close it back down. And then one more thing I'm gonna show you. Look at the tail light. B for Bentley. You have the logo, the shape in the light itself. Very nice touch, right, onwards. Back in my garage now, so let's try out a couple of these convenience features in the real world. You know, I've got a box in my hand, the camera in the other hand, so I've got no free hands. Let's head around to the back, a couple of things to load up. And like I've said before, actually, this flat I'm moving into has nothing in it. So I'm going to a completely empty flat, hence why I have an airbed in that box, something to actually sleep on for a night or two until I've bought a bed, and then a duvet, and that kind of stuff. So I'll just load this in. You know, it can make life a little bit easier. Lower the suspension, drop it down. It's sinking down there into the arches. Actually, it can go a little bit further than that. I let go too early. Hold the button, down it goes. Kind of hard to see, but the car is sinking down into what its arches. It's brilliant the way it does that. You can see just by comparing with the front how much difference it makes. Then you don't have to pick your stuff up. <laughs> Some deck chairs, nothing fancy at all here. Just things to help some lamps and yes they're going to have the wrong plugs uk lamps are not going to work in germany but i've got many many adapters until we can buy some lighting because properties in germany come with nothing they are empty no lights no nothing so maybe i need to raise up the suspension first hold the button up we go you can loosely hear the noises it makes and then close the uh, boot back down. But I want to show you the puddle lights. Unlock it, look at this. Look at this, look at this. Bentley, the Wings logo. And you even get that from the rear doors too. How extra cheesy, hey? Anyway, there's also soft clothes back here, which we always love. Sorry, it's got a little bit dark. I just need to wander away from the car to turn the lights back on. 
So the candy red Bentayga sat here. I'm gonna head upstairs, have a sleep, and tomorrow it's the long drive to Frankfurt. I'm gonna do it very, very quickly, I think, on video. It's about nine or 10 hours of real time, but we'll probably do it in a couple of minutes of video time. So I'm off to sleep, I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, so it is time for the journey. Actually, I'm gonna leave the door open. Listen to the cold start, and let's do this the best way possible. Let's start it up into sport mode. So, here we go. What a bark is that, it's brilliant. Deep grumble anyway. Pop it back into Bentley mode, which is the right mix of comfort and sport, the default Bentley configuration. I'm all set, car is set up. About half a tank, so I'm gonna have to stop for fuel at some point shortly. But we'll get on the road. Two hours or so to the Euro Tunnel. I've got a crossing booked. Then it's straight over onto the continent at about six hours further towards Frankfurt. So it will be dark by the time I arrive. It's just uh, 8.30 or so in the morning now. Nice tight garage exit right here. But the journey is on. And we're at the Euro Tunnel about two hours later. Now I got here and the sign said there was gonna be an hour and a half delay. So I drove through anyway and just sort of sat in the boarding lane. And then all of a sudden, two minutes later, before I've even had time to do anything or think I was gonna get my laptop out and start editing or something, we're boarding. So hopefully this is on time. I got here one minute before my check-in deadline. So this might actually end up being about as fast a journey from London to Frankfurt as I can actually do, because I've got no reason to stop on the other side. I've had no traffic out of London. It's all going very smoothly, even though there was a potential for a delay, but that hasn't happened. So let's get on the train and onwards. I think it was a given that with a car like this, I was going to come into the high vehicles part of the Euro Tunnel. Typically it's for over one meter 85, which this probably isn't, but it's so wide that I would not want to take this car down the standard part of this train. I think technically six foot six, whatever that is in meters is the width limit for the normal part. And yeah, that's not a Bentayga. Anyway, it's quiet, it's comfortable, onwards. And at the other end of the train, and just like that, we are in France. So, we'll head on, drive on the other side, put the car in kilometers. That train next to me just heading off, that's a little bit trippy. This is a place I'm rather familiar with, but motorways from here all the way. Hopefully we'll get through to some autobahns in Germany, be able to test out the pace of the Bentayga. We'll just have a nice leisurely drive. I've got to give this car major credit for something that I've just experienced for the first time. Now, there might be other cars that also do this, but when I drove off the Euro Tunnel out onto the roads in France, it detected that I was in France, it's updated the clock automatically, so the analog clock on the dashboard automatically says the new time for France. I changed the speed out to kilometers, but before I changed the speed out to kilometers, it had already told me that it had adapted the headlights to be the European way around, so I'm not blinding cars oncoming, obviously, for left-hand drive uh, cars here versus right-hand drive cars in the UK. I've never seen a car, without even having to tell it that I'm in France, change those kind of things. So that was quite cool. Welcome to Germany, where you rejoin me about three or four hours later. I've been sitting in the usual horrendous traffic through Belgium. I honestly have never driven across Belgium without really bad traffic jams. But I'm now in Germany, where I'm on de-restricted autobahn. Now, a car like this is capable of going very fast on the autobahn. Its top speed is about 301 kilometers an hour, which is 186, 187 miles per hour. So if you put your foot down, it can get a move on, despite the fact that it's well over two tons and it's quite a heavy car. It carries so much momentum as you get moving. However, as I mentioned, this was a new car yesterday when I started this video with under 100 miles on the clock. It now has 700 kilometers on the clock, which must be 400 and something miles, but that still means it's inside, it's running in procedure. So I can't just put my foot down, kick down, use all the revs and go. You have to drive cars when they're new in accordance with the schedule to prolong the life of the engine and make sure they don't use so much oil and blah, blah, blah. I could go on about it all day and you know, I'll be doing that with my AMG GTR and with my Porsche GT3 when they come. But in here, you get a move on, it's a lovely place to be, it's so quiet, and that sound system, the name sound system in here is astonishing. Honestly, you just lose the rest of the world and just let it roll. And the radar cruise control obviously helps make that kind of thing super easy. It's just a chilled out place, so I've got a couple more hours to go, two and a bit more hours, it's gonna be dark by the time I get there. But onwards, crossing the River Rhine. Always down this same route, 
heading towards Frankfurt. Bit of gloominess in the skies, but that's where it's at. Well then, here we are, the lights of the Frankfurt skyscrapers in front of us, heading in towards the city. Just a quick glance at my navigation so I can work out where I'm actually going. Because of course, this is a new address that I'm heading to, which is quite exciting. There's a lot to sort out, but we'll get there. I will park up in the garage. And I want to talk a little bit about the price tag of this car. Be bright on two to Rodelheim, West Cruz, Messer. Yes, I will. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So here we are, a new garage, a new parking space, a very cozy one right now actually. I should have parked the Bentayga a little bit nearer that pillar, but it is a huge thing. It's very, very long and if you leave it parked forward enough that you can open up the boot, it hangs out very far forward and hopefully the VW is going to tuck slightly closer to the wall when he comes down next. Although, like I said, I'll close that gap a little bit more too, but we're going out again very shortly. But I have spent ten and a half hours of today in the Bentayga from London over to Frankfurt. I've become quite accustomed to it. It has that effortless power and momentum that just carries you forward, keeps the thing going, but obviously I haven't been able to properly push it on the Autobahn because it's too new for that. However, it's really comfortable when you're sat inside the car. Everything you touch is very, very nice. I have one or two foibles with the audio system, the entertainment, where things are a little bit funny and scrolling through menus can be really, really awkward. However, I wanted to touch a little bit on the price tag of this car. So this exact car, very, very high specification. The price on the road is 229 thousand one hundred and twenty pounds it's 230 grand for this bentayga the base price is 162,700 so it's got 66,000 pounds of extra specification on top of the standard car to make this one that is a lot the biggest thing is the black line specification to make this the black specification car it's 19,995 for all of those extra parts for all of the blackened parts um, the extra carbon body kit as well, and just generally making it look awesome. Then the paintwork, the candy red is four and a half. You pay to have the lower parts painted as well. And it's just, it's just got everything, all terrain, the technology pack, you name it. This car is 100% fully, fully equipped. So it's awesome. And I mean, for this kind of purpose, I don't think you could really do better. And I'm not done here. I'm going to be shooting some more videos using this car in the coming days here in Germany for plenty more things to do with being in a new place. But I should wrap this one up and head upstairs and take a look at this new place and get myself sorted and find out what I'm going to be doing next. So I hope you've enjoyed following me on the journey, picking up the Bentayga black specification, and I'm looking forward to sharing the rest with you too. So make sure you're subscribed, stay tuned, and I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers.